Earlier this month, I was working on porting Doom X11 to SEL, when someone asked me the screenshots I had posted was the game running on my own custom OS. No, they weren't, but it got me thinking, what are those operating system built from the ground up to run only Doom? It was such a stupid idea, you bet I had to do it. Now, one of the constraints was I couldn't just take Linux and shave it down to the point where I only played Doom. This was going to be built from scratch. In order to make Doom run on the OS, I needed an operating system. Now, I've made bad operating systems in the past, so I was able to set up one somewhat easily. We simply just boot off Grub and print the screen as a test. The next step was to add the Doom source code and link it with the OS. This meant basically just recreating the file structure of the standard library on Linux. Here I have the directory for the standard library with all calls that Doom makes recreated. We have files such as stdio, stdlib, string, unist, values, math, all the classics. Now, I also have to add some stuff for file handling to be bot files, obviously, though the functions really didn't do anything at the time. I was also stupid and made the shell script uh, to compile it rather than make the many easier alternatives, which made for this horrendous file, but after going through all that, we can now finally start working on getting the game to actually work. get the game to actually work, it needs to read the WAD file. The WAD file stores all the game data needed for the game to run, and so I decided to package the WAD into the ISO itself. The ISO is the CD image from which the operating system will be booting. The problem with this is I actually need to read the CD to read the WAD. This meant being able to read the ISO's file system. CDs use the ISO 9660 file system. 9060 is not that complex of a file system, so we're in luck. The first 32 kilobytes we really don't care about. They contain miscellaneous data such as NBRs or the like. Well, well, the actual content actually depends on whether it's good or not. After that, we get the volume descriptor. Now, there are multiple types of volume descriptors, but we only care about the primary volume descriptor. This contains data such as the name of the CD, but most importantly, the root directory record. As you can probably guess from the name, the a directory record stores data about a specific directory such as names, file flags, etc. And the primary volume descriptor stores the root directory, and so we can just load it from there. To find files using the directory record, we keep searching from directory names from the root directory until we eventually reach the directory we're looking for. In part two of three of the series, we'll actually look at implementing the file system. However, in part three, we'll actually start working on graphics. Now, what's nothing that you say? Oh, right, right. Uh, subscribe if you want to see the next parts. Um, like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you did. And I guess I'll see you in the next one.